Hey guys, I'm Gabby Zakara and welcome to my channel. Thanks for putting on this video. Um, we've got an amazing special guest today. It's Brad Jameston. Um, Brad, I don't know where to start with this guy. He's literally like amazing. He's um, a good friend of mine from back in uni. Uh, we both did, did music together and we've both ended up kind of finding our own spiritual journeys of like self-remembrance and healing since then too. Um, he's a life guidance coach here to help others heal and grow. Um, he's an amazing musician. He's built his own van style home and pretty much traveled the world, experiencing all different cultures um, and really just bringing his music and energy and joy to everyone he meets. So Brad, welcome onto the show. I'm really pleased to have you on. Thanks so much. That was a lovely introduction. Love that, mate. <laughs> I meant it. And um, I wanted to start, really, and I've got loads and loads of things to ask you. So um, just thinking to start at the beginning, so after uni, I'd say, um, and you kind of just, from what I saw on Instagram, you just decided to, like, get a van and deck it out and then go travelling. So what was it that mm. inspired you to just want to do that? Like, where did that idea come from? I think my favourite Disney movie when I was a little boy was Tarzan. Right. And then there was just always been a, a, a draw to nature for me. So I think it was like my subconscious living out its, like, its path of just wanting to reconnect with nature, wanting to experience a bit more wild, wanting to just break free from the the norm i think mm -hmm. having having the, the the freedom was a massive a massive part of that so um remember when i first mentioned it to sarah my fiance she wasn't my fiance at the time um and i mentioned it to my family and they were like you're nuts you're absolutely <laughs> nuts <laughs> and then, and then I, we went through with it anyway and we, we sold the car got the van um my dad was absolute legend and oh. we worked on it together and and then I've had it four years now and like I say I've been all over Europe, been to Africa, um it's been it's been my home and it's just so many memories, so many experiences in it and yeah, it's uh it gives me that give me that freedom that I was looking for, I think. Yeah. Mm. And like you're living back at home now, are you like what's it how is it different to now just like not living in the van anymore? Do you miss living in the van? Oh, spring has arrived. So the van's <laughs> come back out to play for the spring. Ah. Um, yeah, it was, I was, it was funny. I was in Gran Canaria. I was when lockdown started. Um, so a little tiny island off the coast of Africa and I've been spending a lot of time in, on the mountain top there. Um, I was already like self-isolating really. Mm -hmm. um, but then it was a serious case of like the armed police were like knocking on, checking all the vans, like, are you a resident of the island? If not, go. Really? Um, so yeah, we've got like four days to leave and that to just book a ferry and come home. So we decided to get a, an apartment in the hometown and last summer we're still doing some adventures in the UK and I'm looking forward to a few more adventures in the UK this, this summer as well. I want to mm. tour around, do a, a bit of a busking tour around the UK and Lockdown for me really led me to the path of coaching. Mm -hmm. um, I'd already been on the personal development journey for a couple of years. I'd had six months of sobriety under my belt when I decided to start coaching and that's coming up to two years now. And yeah, last year was a, was a big transformative year for, for a lot of people, but that's how it was mm -hmm. transformative for myself, I think. Yeah, well, I'm sure you've like heard of like the Great Awakening that's happening and happening and started back mm. in like 2012 and stuff. And um, mm. so, just the way that everything's going at the minute, like people are just starting to kind of come round to realizing their true divine selves and um, just kind of realizing there's so much more going on than than you would think. And obviously, mm -hmm. the way that life is kind of designed, it's designed to make you not think about these things. You're so engulfed in like say watching tv or your nine to five job and all that kind of stuff and um, it's been like almost a mind trap for everyone to be stuck in and to not kind of realize themselves but lockdown has been a massive thing because it's just given everyone the time 
to just have nothing to do but question these things and they're not just rushing like a blue ass flying well what's that saying like a blue yeah, they, yeah, blue ass fly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're not rushing around like that anymore they've just got the time and so um yeah but talking about the sobriety thing because i saw you did a post it was probably it well you did you say it, it's it's been a while now you've been fully sober but i saw you done a post when you said you'd um, given up smoking weed <laughs> mm -hmm. and um I wanted to talk to you about that because I also around that time had given up as well, probably like um, literally around the same time. And when I used to um, smoke and drink, I've not drank for like two years as well. Mm, but amazing. These are like two drugs that a lot of people in society, like they think it's okay and it is okay if you want to smoke and if you want to drink. Um, mm -hmm. It's like everyone's own journey, but Tell me how it felt for you after giving up, because I always saw myself, I always thought my, my whole life I'd be smoking weed, I'd be a granny baking space cakes for my, for my grandchildren, and I thought it'd be like something I'd always hold on to. And, and I never wanted to give it up, but when I did, my whole life changed, and I'd love to hear your perspective on things, mm -hmm. how it felt for you, like were you glad to have given up in the end? Did you want to at the time, or did, what, what, why did you give up and things like that? Mate, yeah, congratulations, by the way. I didn't know you were like two years alcohol free. That's amazing. How, how long have you been cannabis free, sorry? I'd say about two years as well. Right, right. Amazing. Amazing. Um, yeah, um, with, I'm, and I'm looking forward to diving in your version of events, mate, totally, but I'll answer your question. Um, so with, with alcohol, it was a case of, being a, being a singer, being an entertainer, I was getting paid to like sing people songs in pubs and start the party. So, and I loved to drink myself. So like my work became a place where I drank. Mm. My socials became, was a place where I drank. Um, my passion, because work was also my passion for music. So that became a place of alcohol. And it was this financial dependency on getting drunk because that paid the bills but it was also my passion and it also took me traveling because i was working in different holiday and um, places from like ibiza to um the ski slopes and it was all just this really messy tangled relationship with alcohol that i couldn't seem to shift mm. and then i'd get home and i read the the catalyst for me was i'd i'd been away and i'd, I'd had this job on the slopes and I'd earned like really good money while I was singing in Italy and I came home and I had no money left and I was like where did my money go and I just realized look back on this time and I was like I pissed it up the wall and I had no no savings so that was like okay I'm gonna that was like the final straw that brought the cameras back and I said I'm gonna do a 90 day alcohol free because this is a problem in my life um so after 90 days felt so good to sign myself for another 90 days and I was having all these like all these emotions were rushing to the surface I was like seeing things so much clearly I was finding like wells and wells of energy emotion like I'd be crying tears of joy and like around about month three like a song would come on the radio and I'd be bursting into tears just feeling these raw emotions for the first time in a long time um and it was life-changing and then 90 days turned into 180 days turned into i'm going to do a year and then i questioned whether i would have a couple of drinks around a year and um and it ended up not and now i'm like nearly two years sober so that was that was my journey with alcohol cannabis was a little bit different because cannabis was still there when i was when i'd first quit alcohol um and like we know like alcohol is is poisonous and it's and it's addictive and it, yes it can be social lubricant totally like if you use it if you can use it appropriately then like power to you um but it has addictive qualities whereas cannabis is sort of especially now everyone's talking about like it's a super healing plant and it's not addictive and it's um it, you can grow a dependency on it but it's psychological and the, the plant is a miracle plant and to some extent, like I totally agree. Like I think that this that cannabis is a miracle plant, helping cancer sufferers, people suffering like from severe anxiety. Like it brings us from a place from the low frequency energies of suffering, like uh, well, like pain and fear, 
and it brings us to this place of acceptance, which in a, in a non-toxic way, which is a beautiful thing, absolutely beautiful thing. Raise your frequency out of those low level negative energies into a place of acceptance. That's, that is beautiful. But acceptance is only like midway on the frequency table. Above acceptance, we have joy and peace and passion and will. And there's so much more to be lived. And what can happen is, although cannabis has the beautiful power of raising us up to a place of acceptance, it's also got the power to hold us back and keep us in that place of acceptance. So we just, we get to a point where we're accepting of our life and then we lose the ambition to grow, mm. and we lose the ambition to move forward. Um, so it's a, it's a, it's a double-edged sword, if that's the right term. Um, but it's, it's fine in balance with, uh, like all things, it's fine in balance. Yeah, I love the way that you've just described that and it's so true. And I sometimes think that certain things in life they, they can teach us things like cannabis. It, it, like you say, it's got such amazing healing powers and we're only just really discovering how much it could even do. Um, mm -hmm. And so it helps a lot of people on their spiritual journey as well. Some people say they can astral project through cannabis and things like that. Other people, it kind of like, it takes them on a bit of a downer. And like you say, like it can block you. That's where it got to with me. I just, I was just convinced that it was making me more creative. I was convinced that I was getting stuff done on it in reality compared to if I wasn't on it, like I would have done so much more. I, I used it as a bit of an excuse really. And then I didn't like myself when I wasn't on it. I felt like I was a bit aggy when I wasn't on it. I needed it to like mm -hmm. chill me out. And so it was just like this where, because I didn't see it as a negative thing, I thought it's okay to, to stay in it for the rest of my life because it's, you know, it's got good, good sides to it. But I just do think that there's a lot of things that they can teach you up to a point and you get what you need out of them. But then after that, if they've te te taught you everything they can, that's it then. You should just learn to let it go and let that spirit teach someone else what needs to be taught kind of thing. Like I felt mm -hmm. like, I've been taught everything I could from using cannabis to the point where it's like, now you just need to let go of her hand and just kind of, you know, uh, mm -hmm. go and live your life and integrate what you've learned, but without mm -hmm. being reliant and dependent on her. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. 100%. That's beautiful. It's like, what's the difference between a crutch and a tool? Mm. So a tool you would pick up and use for a specific job, for a specific situation, and then you were able to put it down and carry on. Whereas a crutch becomes like an extension of your body. It's like a, an extra appendage because you can't go anywhere without the crutch. It's like a necessity. And it's how do you use cannabis? Is it as a tool or are you using it as a crutch? And being able to be honest with yourself and recognize actually my relationship with it is out of balance mm -hmm. it's, i'm not just picking it up and using it as a tool mm -hmm. it's more like a crutch because i'm using it every day and like you say i think when you when you're smoking cannabis every day it can it can be very convincing because it is so comfortable and it's so warming and it does take the worries away mm -hmm. but actually that's with that's kind of the problem with today's society at large is that we are so dependent on comfort mm -hmm. and it's actually like we need to start leaning into discomfort we've got so like accustomed to our for example cold shower cold water therapy is like just been such a discovery for me over the past year like we're just so comfortable in our nice central heated homes and our cars have <coughs> bum warmers if you're lucky enough to have a car with a bum warmer and we're wearing coats and clothes all the time and we're just so like desensitized to the forces of nature mm. and getting in the cold water is something that is actually so natural for our biology but we feel it to be so uncomfortable that like the, the cold becomes a negative force in our mind and it's not a negative force it's just a force Mm. and like like you say cannabis is sort of that warm cozy blanket that we can 
clove ourselves mm. all day every day yeah or we can do that too yeah and as well like um a lot of people do kind of feel like they need or want to escape from like the present moment or reality because it especially in times like this it's not comfortable to kind of be here and sit in your own <laughs> traumas and you know like just really mm. face yourself and, and just sit in your own body and I found something that I always used to do is like want to escape into something no matter what it is I just didn't want to be here it was just like really boring or you know having to like really experience your emotions and things like that and so say if someone's watching this video now and they feel a bit stuck in their lives or they're just not sure like they know that they need to do some work they're not really sure where to start say if someone came to you for a session is there kind of like a main thing you'd look at like do you always go right let's let's start off what's your morning routine like or do you say like mm -hmm. what's your diet like or just say like where you're using your energy at the minute like for you mm -hmm. if someone was watching what could they look at in their own lives and think right here's a start mm. so first off it's by it, it's recognizing that expecting change from the same repeated actions is quite literally the definition of insanity mm -hmm. but we do it all the time we want change and we suffer and we wonder why isn't anything going to change without actually changing anything ourselves. so our thoughts feelings and behaviors are all interlinked our thoughts create our feelings our feelings determine how we behave but also the other way around how we behave determines how we feel and how we feel determines how we think and we've got to, if we want change we've got to break the chain somewhere mm. so if you are listening and you're super struggling to even just get yourself out of bed on a morning let's start with that like bloody hell can't even get out of bed on a morning what's the first thing that you do when you open your eyes because nowadays the likelihood is that you're jumping straight on your phone and scrolling into social media like we're just wired to get our dopamine hit from that mm. and by doing that you give up your power instantly giving up your power first thing on the morning you've given up your power to a technology that was designed to use you as currency your attention as currency it's designed to keep you using the app you're making all these decisions whether to like it or whether to scroll past it whether you should answer that message or not answer that message and we don't realize that we're causing loads of decision fatigue as well then we're comparing our life there's there's so many things that are going on before we've even had chance to just tune into ourselves. Mm. You just you're in you're asleep all night long in in your deep subconscious where all your dreams are made all your ideas are coming up and it's a real like sacred place and then instead of integrating that experience of the subconscious world into your morning how do you want to show up today instead of asking yourself the question like who am i we're getting told who we are i'm not enough i'm not i'm not living that life mm -hmm. i'm not getting these many likes so i'm not worthy mm. and that's at the first thing we tell ourselves on the morning it's like you know the, the discussion on psychedelics like the integration part of the psychedelic journey is just as important as the trip itself you go on an ayahuasca tree or you have some magic mushroom tea and you have this mind-blowing experience and like that's one thing but then like taking the lessons that you learned and integrating them into your real life is like the most important thing of that nice mm -hmm. to have the experience but integrating it in your life and like we should be doing it on the daily basis because that rest deep rested sleep and connecting with the subconscious like that's powerful well how can we come out of that and integrate it into the real world how can we come out of that your brainwave state it's like you, you wake up you're in you're in a low frequency brainwave state really connected to that 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 space and yeah it's just about 
asking questions, tra- checking what your habits are. Are you giving up your, your power straight away to the phone or are you taking that time to work on yourself? Mm-hmm. And also just to add being aware of like 